All the characters in the story are over 18 years old. Nora really wanted Tom to come home that day. A week earlier, she had pulled the string so that her son would get his first summer job at a marketing and sales firm. It was mostly related to menial tasks such as product promotion, but the experience was invaluable. She beamed when she saw him walk through the front door and look quite professional in his new suit and sharp haircut. How was your first day at work? She smiled as she looked at him. Now you're like a real businessman. Tom took off his shoes and went into the living room, where he abruptly collapsed on the sofa. On his way downstairs, he dropped a small folder on the table. It was fun. Except I had to stand for about 10,000 hours, he whined, as usual. I hate to tell you this, but there are 24 hours in the day, and you were gone for less than eight. Some people age faster than others, he joked. Nora sat down next to him. You'll get used to it, and when you do, you will find that the work is very useful. This will allow you to support yourself financially, but more importantly, it's something you'll be proud of. I'm proud that I can still walk. Come on, it couldn't be that bad. No, I think not, he thought. The boss is actually a very nice guy, and he thinks I have potential. He told me that before I left today. Did you tell him to say that, Mom? She shook her head and grinned. Not once in a million years. We just met for dinner last week, and I arranged this favor. He only agreed to hire you for the summer. Everything else is none of my business. Everything you've done has really made an impression. Anyway, he talked about how the company plans to expand over the next three years. This means that I can potentially get a real job after graduation. I just need to prove myself. Both of them were happy about this news. How exactly would you prove yourself? She asked. The basics. I had to show that I was a great salesperson with creative marketing ideas designed for complex products. Keep in mind that the competition is fierce. There are super smart college students who have worked there longer. Well, a good work ethic is just as important as intelligence, and you, my dear, have both. If you need my advice, quality is better than quantity. Strategy is the key point. So if you think hard enough and stay focused, then you'll have a great chance. Even sell underwear? What is it? He asked half-jokingly. What do you mean? Nora raised an eyebrow analyzing the situation in her head. Are they mostly selling underwear now? They sell a lot of things, but the good things are underwear. From a strategic point of view, if I can sell large quantities of premium goods, I will quickly find a full-time job at the company. Unfortunately, I have no idea how to sell women's underwear. With that attitude, you'll never get anywhere in life, mister, she chided. You're handsome, funny, and smart. Use these qualities to your advantage. Start small and move on to more challenging tasks. Try yourself. Tom was not impressed by his mom's rant. Oh yeah? So how do you think I'm going to sell underwear that costs thousands of dollars? Thousands of dollars? Are you serious? This is a high-quality, expensive brand. It costs several thousand dollars per set. Take a look for yourself. Nora picked up a stack of flyers on the table inside the folder. She looked through the papers in search of the necessary information. With her work experience, a quick glance was all she needed to get a clear understanding of the business model. She nodded. You're right. Premium class items. Some of them are collectibles. I've never heard of it. Is it worth it? Wealthy men love to see their wives in these outfits or their mistresses, to be honest. Women love them too, obviously. They look and feel amazing. No offense but you're a 21-year-old guy, and I didn't expect you to understand. That's exactly what I want to say. I'm at a great disadvantage. I do not know how to present these items to rich older women. And secondly, my competitors are college girls. They know a lot more than I do. Nora immediately understood his point of view. She set out to find a way to success for her beloved son. Soon, an awkward and unusual plan formed in her mind. The question was, would Tom fit into this scheme? You're right, she admitted. You're at a big disadvantage here. So I officially screwed up? Not really, she said shyly. What do you mean? Do you have any secret marketing tips? No, but the answer is simple, she said. Do you remember when you were young and sold candy to raise funds at school? I bought most of them from you. It's chocolate, he pointed out. They cost about $2 each. 
The underwear we're talking about is worth thousands. I consider this an investment in your future, she smiled serenely. Tom moved closer. Wait, are you going to buy underwear on my behalf? Yes, she beamed with maternal pride. Great, thanks. He exclaimed before coming back to reality. Are you sure? It is expensive. I mean, you don't have to spend that much money if it's going to be a problem. Nora flipped through the papers again. She studied the photos, descriptions, and the cost of underwear. Of course I'm sure, she confirmed. These things are great, and they will help your promising career. It's a win-win situation. I'll buy some underwear, and you can show your boss what a skilled salesman you are. You're the best. I know, but there's only one catch, she said, looking at him seriously. What is it? I know the perfect place to buy these items, Nora explained. The owner is very smart, sweet, and knowledgeable. The only problem is that she is very attentive to her customers. How so? She spoke slowly. That means, she sells only the best things, to couples or people she considers worthy. Does it make sense? The hint in Nora's voice was unmistakable. She was sure Tom would understand that. Of course, he caught on. Do you want us to act like a couple? Tom said bluntly. Basically, just act like we're together and let me do the talking. Do you agree with that? It may be weird, but it's worth it. I had no idea that underwear mattered so much. It's like we're making a deal to sell banned substances or something like that. She looked into his eyes. Trust me, you'll soon find out why women love underwear so much. This is first-class material. Whatever you say. Do you think she'll understand that I'm your son? Maybe. Maybe. Please don't tell me she's going to check on us. Nora giggled. No, but she could. Listen, this woman is extremely picky about her customers and high-end products. I really respect that. You just need to play your part. Trust me, you'll understand when you get there. Probably not. But if you're willing to spend the money, then I'll be professional. Let's go this weekend. Great. I'll call and make an appointment. Do you need to make an appointment to buy underwear? He asked incredulously. Only for special purchases. Trust me. She patted her son on the shoulder. She spread out the papers and put them back in the folder. It's time to schedule their shopping trips. Deep down, she was sure that this was the right course of action for Tom's sake. The store was an elegant place on the outskirts of the city. Miko, a middle-aged Japanese woman, was incredibly proud of her work. In fact, she viewed her business as a service to society. For her, proper underwear were important components of a fulfilling life. Fortunately, when they met at 8 a.m., they would have a place for us. This saved them from having to share a dressing room with strangers. Miko, it's good to see you again, Nora smiled, shaking hands. Welcome back, Nora, Miko greeted warmly in a Japanese accent. My assistant is unavailable today, so I will personally take care of all your needs. I see you've brought a guest. Nora smiled and pointed at her son. This is Tom. He, well... Let's just say I'm buying these items for his benefit. Oh, my God. Miko blushed. Nora, I'm so happy for you. When Miko looked at Tom, Nora suddenly felt uncomfortable at the thought of being involved with a man almost half her age. But she had expected it. It was a price she was willing to pay. Thank you, Nora said with a fake smile, hoping the store owner wouldn't pry anymore. We're here because I want to make special purchases. Which ones are special? Nora reached into her purse and handed the shopkeeper a handwritten list of things. Miko looked at the paper thoughtfully. Yes, we have them in stock, Miko said without taking her eyes off the paper. Very special items. I'll bring them from the warehouse and you can choose the ones you like. I want to buy everything on the list. Miko smiled, shifting her gaze to the couple. Oh, what an exquisite taste. Only the best for us, Nora replied. Why not? I'm with someone I love, and I want only the best. Great. I still have your measurements. The process should be quite simple. Well, can we skip this part today? I'm sure they'll be perfect. As you know, I have a strict refund and refund policy. We will need to make sure that each item is the right size, and you like it. I'll do you a favor if I let you spend that much money. And we need to make sure that it gives the desired effect. Nora had expected this. Knowing about Miko's reputation as an unsurpassed professional, maybe it doesn't really matter, 
she thought, but the idea of modeling underwear in front of him really made her feel somewhat awkward. Was it worth it? Absolutely. It's not a problem at all, Nora smiled automatically. I'll be happy to try them on first. Miko bowed. In five minutes, I want you both to meet me in the locker room. Both of us? Nora asked, instantly trying to hide her discomfort. Yes, of course. The reason we're here is Tom's reaction to every piece of underwear. Oh, right. For the second time, Nora put on a fake smile that seemed sincere enough. Nodding slightly, Miko retreated to find special items of underwear in her pantry. In the main room of the store, Nora and Tom's faces were slightly surprised. Don't worry, Tom said quietly. I'll turn away, or I just approve each item quickly. Knowing Miko, it won't be that easy. Last time, I stayed there for almost an hour. God, then why did you come here? Because Miko is the best, Nora replied. She knows the most and she has the largest collection of special underwear. Thanks. I really appreciate it, Mom. Don't thank me yet. Let's pray that she does everything quickly today, although I doubt she will do it. Tom thought for a moment. What should we do if, you know, she makes you show your underwear? I'm not sure. How do you feel about this crazy plan? Nora immediately went into mom mode and studied Tom's eyes carefully, noting his every reaction. As always, she wanted the truth from him. Promise you won't be upset? He asked. I swear. You're right about Miko. She seems extremely dedicated and precise. So in my opinion, the only way to end this is to give her what she wants. Nora's left eyebrow arched. What? Confidence. I carefully inspect the first garment and then approve its size and material. That way, it will look like I've done my due diligence and that we're confident in our decision. This is unusual, Nora thought. This is an issue that will need to be resolved later. Tom was right. It seemed the only way to achieve their goal. Okay, she said. Nora patted him on the shoulder. Good. Now let's go to the dressing room. She should be ready by now. The locker room was chic and designed for women. It was clean, with good lighting. There was also a large three-sided mirror at the end. The entire space was designed so that women could see themselves from all sides. Miko was there, laying out an assortment on a round table. For a woman like Nora, it was heaven. Her eyes admired the variety. All she could think about was how the luxurious material would feel on her. Everything is ready, Miko smiled politely. Your timing is impeccable. Nora continued to look around. When it comes to underwear like this, I'm never late. Very good. Let's get started. It was a moment of truth. Nora glanced at her son, signaling him to either turn his head or leave. Tom said, You ladies take your time. I'd like to take a look at the store. Let me know when you're done. This is unwise, Miko said with a note of authority in her voice. This underwear is for your pleasure. The material is clean and quite expensive. You have to study all the critical stages. It was an amazing event. Nora knew that Miko meant business, and she avoided arousing suspicion. She didn't want to break the deal or, worse, be kicked out of Miko's store. Nora nodded in fake agreement. It makes sense, Miko. This is a delicate decision. Nora shot her son a look, which was her subtle and nonverbal way of warning him not to look at her. She wondered if Tom had taken the hint. To her surprise, Tom just stood there and watched. It quickly became obvious that he wasn't going to budge or give up the show. Nora was trapped. It was too unnatural. Her eyes flicked to the underwear on the table. She needed to get rid of the discomfort if she wanted to help Tom get a job. And the amazing underwear motivated her too. Unfortunately, turning her back on Tom, Nora noticed three-sided mirrors on the wall. Using the reflection in the mirror, she took another look at her son, but to no avail. Tom didn't take his eyes off me. Stunned, Nora wondered if Tom wanted to watch or if he just couldn't pick up on her nonverbal signals demanding privacy. As if confirming her suspicions, Tom grinned as she looked on in disbelief. Nora was standing at the intersection. Should she at least try to preserve some kind of maternal dignity? Annoyed, she realized that it was impossible to position herself in such a way as to minimize his visual access. She looked in the mirror confirming her suspicions. Her son looked like he was watching a show. Once again, 
She was amazed by the wonderful craftsmanship of this beautiful piece as she looked into each mirror to appreciate her reflection. Nora, you're just amazing, Miko said sincerely. Better than models and magazines. Your partner is so lucky. Nora raised an eyebrow. Do you agree, dear? Without a doubt, Tom confirmed, trying not to sound so arrogant because of his overwhelming approval. It looks amazing, Mom. Uh, I mean, this is a significant case. I'm sorry. You look so beautiful that I stumble over my words. Nora appreciated his smooth correction after calling her Mom. All Nora could do was treat the situation with humor. And if she was honest with herself, it was a perfect confirmation that she could still attract a younger man. The fact that it was her son bothered her a little, but she tried to talk about it professionally. After all, she reminded herself it was her mother's business. It was a means to an end, and hopefully it's worth it. Tom, you seem very pleased with Nora's underwear set, Miko pointed out. Miko said that we need to understand how this underwear will work. She asked them to make love right here in the locker room. Nora tried to send her son a subconscious message to her mother, severely scolding him, but it was hopeless. Tom either didn't pay attention or pretended he didn't know anything. Nora sighed in surrender. Oh my God, Tom muttered. I can't believe we did this. Nora stared into Tom's eyes. There was no embarrassment, just an expression of pure love. Then Nora smiled at Miko. The store owner quickly walked away and headed for the cash register. Nora looked at Tom carefully when they were alone in the locker room. Are you satisfied? She asked. With what? I don't know. They silently looked into each other's eyes and made love again while Miko walked away. Nora heard the familiar sound of Miko's footsteps returning to the locker room. When the clatter of heels suddenly stopped, Nora looked up and saw Miko frozen in place with a suitcase containing an underwear bill. You're back so soon, Nora said. Miko nodded slowly. Yeah, please. Take your time. Now, having received full permission, Nora returned to her task. Miko smiled, pleased with the changes. No rush. I gave you a 50% discount. It's very sweet, but I can't accept it. Only the best for such a loyal customer. I insist that you deserve this price discount. Maybe. Will you be back soon? After this incident, Tom got a promotion at work for selling underwear and their relationship with Nora continued to develop.